Good afternoon YouTube viewers and subscribers. So yesterday I released a video called Sado Failure Analysis A Design Flaw. And in that video I made some, drew some conclusions that may not necessarily be correct. And I want to take the time here to clarify some of the things I said in that video and substantiate it more with some better facts that I have found after the fact. Now the facts that I know as I know them are that in the last four months I have had three engines in my possession that all had the exact same failure mechanism and that was that the crank pin sheared off from the counterweight of the crankshaft resulting in catastrophic failure blowing the crankcase apart. And two of those instances were on OS FS48 surpass engines and then of course the last one was on the generation 1 Sato FA65 engine from yesterday's video. Now the other facts regarding those three engines are that all three engines did have completely hollow crank pins that I thought looked like they were pressed into the counterweight. Now whether that part's true or not I'm not sure. The bottom line is all three of the crank pins were indeed hollow all the way into the counterweight and that can be verified and proved because I've still got those parts. So after I posted that video I started to wonder you know is it really possible that Sato would make all of their crankshafts with hollow crank pins like that because I also have another one of the facts is that when I ordered a replacement crankshaft for one of those OSFS 48 surpass engines it came to me with a completely solid uh, crank pin. It was one piece of machine steel didn't have a dimple in it, it was not hollow, it was solid. So I was led to believe that they discovered they had a problem and corrected the problem. I also probably incorrectly assumed that Sato did the same thing. So I started looking at some of my other Sato videos, disassembly videos, just to check to see if, if the Sato Gen 65 Gen 1 was the only engine that had what looked like hollow crank pins or not. And it did not, it did appear that I saw, or it did look like from some of my videos that I saw holes, or what I thought from the video looked like, a hollow crank pin on other engines that I've serviced. Now the fact of the matter is, I've never really paid much attention to the crank pins on crankshafts of any engine in the past prior to those two FS48 surpass engines. I've never had a need to because I've never seen a failure there, never read about many failures there, so I never had a need to really pay any attention to that. So it wasn't something that in the years that I've been doing engines that I've actually paid attention to and looked at intensely. So I started kind of looking at that this morning and I was reading some Clarence Lee reviews on Sato engines and I'm not a machinist nor am I an engine designer so I don't have nearly as much knowledge as Sato, OS, who are extremely successful engine making companies and they know what they're doing and they're both still in business so I think they're putting out good product and they're not putting out defective materials and Clarence Lee also probably knows I know he knows a hell of a lot more about engines than I do and probably how they're manufactured so in his reviews there is really never any mention about the crank pin specifically on the on the crankshafts. What he'll usually say about a Sato crankshaft is it's a single piece forged chrome molybdenum uh, crankshaft and he may just say the, the crank pin is ground on all surfaces because that provides a better bearing surface. That's all he ever mentions. He never says oh the crank pin is is a hollow piece, it's, it's pressed in place or anything like that. However, like I said, the facts are the crank pin that came out of that Sato FA65 Gen 1 engine yesterday was hollow and you can see that it was hollow all the way through. So, <clears throat> excuse me, so it made me think I better do a follow-up video and clarify some things because the last thing I want is to do damage to any to the reputation or maybe I don't think I could do damage to the reputation of Sato engines but what I don't want to do is put doubt in the viewers minds that watch my videos and think that oh my god all their Sato engines are crap or they're going to start opening the back plates up and looking if they see a hole or a hollow crank a hollow crank pin they're going to say oh my god this is a horrible engine I got to get rid of it or I got to quit using it that is not the case at all and that is not certainly was not my intention 
So all day at work I was mulling over this and I thought, well, i got to come up with a follow-up video. So what I have done is I have just randomly grabbed three Sato engines out of my bin and I take, removed the back plate from them. And what I found is interesting because in my reading at work, yes, I was reading at work, and looking at some of my videos, to me it looked like I had seen some that had hollow crank pins. But, like I said, it wasn't like in my assemblies I would sit there and hold the crank pin, you know, facing up into the camera. It was kind of a passing shot, so you really couldn't tell for sure. But here I've got three engines. I've got a Sato FA91S, a Sato FA80, and my 180. And I want to show you that something I found that I think is rather interesting. And that I do believe that Sato made a change in that FA65 Generation 1 from that was made in the 80s. So first I want to show you this Sato FA91 and I think you can see here that it does look like there is a hole in the crank pin but it's not a hollow tube it doesn't go that deep so if I put this little piece of metal in there and pull this thing out it goes in that far if you can see that so it's not like that even goes all the way through the distance of the connecting rod and into the counterweight itself. So I was shocked because at first I was like, holy crap, that's a hollow crank pin. But I can even tell that the surface doesn't really look the same as the one that was on that FA-65. So here's my FA-180. And you'll see the same thing. On first glance, it looks like it's a hollow crank pin. But again, it isn't. It has a hole kind of milled into it and again it's not that deep now I know I don't have my micrometer out here I'm just doing this as a quickie thing so that one is not a hollow crank pin and now my FA80 which also would appear to have that hole and again I had to use a q-tip to get the oil out of these holes again that doesn't go all that deep so, it does appear that things have changed between when that Sato FA65 Gen 1 was made and later engines and how they actually made the um, crankshafts. And that I think Clarence Lee is right. It was a single piece chrome molybdenum forged steel or whatever. But the reason, the thing that's curious to me is in that Gen 1 Sato 65, why would the crank pin be hollow? All the way through anyway because if you say well it's to relieve weight or remove material to help balance out the piston and connecting rod well isn't that the purpose of relieving the counterweight and making it that shape so to me it seemed like there was really no sense in having a hollow crank pin and these three engines seem to back that up Maybe they milled a little portion into that as just a fixture to hold it. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not a machinist, so I don't really know. Or maybe they actually did do an additional little bit of milling in that crank pin, just small enough, just to remove just enough, enough additional weight to help balance out the weight of the piston and the connecting rod. I don't know for sure, and there's really no way I can know for sure, because I don't have a contact to anybody that works in an engine manufacturer, other than John at Laser Engines and basically he told me that a hollow crank pin should sustain um, the force and should be able to should be able to withstand that. So that leads me to the final thing I want to talk about briefly is that how did this happen? How did these failure mechanisms occur? Now you can say well that crank pin if it was a machine part if the whole thing was that the whole crankshaft was machined and then they went around and they ground the surface around the crank pin to make it shiny for a bearing, better bearing surface, maybe they nicked it or they caused some kind of shock or metal fatigue that was, would result in a latent failure later in time. That is a possibility. However, like I said, this is OS and Sato who have been in business for many, many years selling thousands upon thousands upon thousands of engines and you kind of think they know what they're doing. So what's the only other thing that remains? Well the only other thing that remains that could potentially cause a chip uh, mechanical shock or metal fatigue is the operator. 
the operator could have potentially done something to cause the initial damage that resulted later in time in this failure mechanism. Think about it now. Now, out of the hundreds of thousands of these engines produced and sold, and we've only heard about maybe a handful of failures like this, but then you have those hundreds of thousands of engines being sold to people that vary in experience in the hobby and experience in operating engines. So you got to figure at least maybe a good chunk of them are new to the hobby as we all were at one time and completely ignorant about a lot of things. None of us entered this hobby knowing exactly what we're doing. So the potential is greater or the I think the uh, the thought process is that it's more likely that this was an operator induced incident that caused the initial metal fatigue or crack or whatever it was that ultimately led to the failure because how do you prime an engine and one of the things that manuals always say is make sure that when you prime your engine you don't over prime it and hydro lock it and that's why after you prime it they want you to rotate the prop through several times to clear any excess fuel out think about it if a person that's unknowing doesn't read the manual as a lot of people don't just primes the crap out of their engine doesn't clear it and make sure it isn't hydrolock and puts an electric starter on there what's going to happen it's going to cause a really strong mechanical shock on what the crank pin and that could lead to a problem an issue that results in a catastrophic failure later on down the line and another thing is any kind of a detonation event any kind of an event like that that results in the engine stopping instantaneously is also going to be putting uh, a shock on that crank pin. That crank pin has to sustain all of the forces of that. So in my mind, in summary, we know the facts as I stated them early in the video. In my mind, the likelihood that everybody else's Sato engine is bad is not high. And we also know that these engine manufacturers know what they're doing. Now the kicker is in this, in that they're basically about the only two engine manufacturers left, or very few. And if people are getting into the glow market and there's a huge used glow engine market, you don't, you never really know how your engine's been treated if you're buying a used engine. Especially one that's new, run one time, as was stated yesterday. So, it kind of goes back to the thing where buying a used engine is really a crapshoot. And unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of choices now because of the few engine manufacturers left. So you're relegated to having to buy a lot of used engines and you really have no knowledge of how they were used or abused. So buying used engines, and I've said it many times before, is a crapshoot. It's a risk and you really never know what you're getting for sure or how it was treated. And we all know, or at least we should know, that the very first run of an engine is the most critical run as far as breaking it in and longevity and it's also most likely when something like a hydrolock event could occur. So I'm hoping that I've alleviated some concerns that many viewers might have now and that are scrambling around to look at their Sato engines and think well now they've got a bunch of garbage because that's not the case and I'm pretty sure that you don't have anything to worry about. So anyway uh, Thank you for watching and I hope this clarifies my video from the other day.